Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the council meeting for today, Monday, May 9th, 2022. Thank you for joining us live tonight or for coming back and watching the rebroadcast at another time. At this time, the meeting is now called to order, and we will begin with the opening prayer by Councilmember McBride. Good evening, everyone. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this meeting with all the council and the residents. We ask, Father, that you would continue to bless us. Give us a mind and help us, oh, Father, to help us to make wise decisions. I ask you to look upon those tonight that are suffering with mental illnesses and sicknesses. And I pray that we will all come together and make the decisions that will bless the town of Bladenburg. Bless every resident that's online. Bless the ones that cannot be here but had a desire to be here. In your name we pray, Father. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that, Council Member McBride. Mr. Tonelli, are you able to angle so we can see the flag? Actually, Rick. Uh, oh, there, there it is. Go. Okay. Yep. <laughs> there it is. I keep forgetting we have our virtual flag <laughs> technology, I tell you. Well, since we have Mr. Jeffries with us, would you mind leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance, sir? <laughs> okay, here we go. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much for that. And at this time, uh, under the approval of the agenda, wanted to um, just bring to the council's attention, I um, wanted to bring up the National Police Week here and um, asking for support of a proclamation for that. Um, was there anything else that was missing? Council Member Rout? Yes, Mental Health Awareness Day. Oh, that's right. Yes, for the update. Thank you. And we didn't get to the La Perez Consulting. Yep, and that I said we would have to do here because it was financial. <laughs> so um, that is under unfinished business. So with that, I'll call for a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Moved by Council Member Brown. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Council Member McBride. Uh, again, um, as far as discussion goes, we'll include National Police Week proclamation as well as a mental health awareness update by Council Member Route. Any other omissions? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor, let it be known by the saying of aye. 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 Any nays? The ayes have it. Thank you so much. So, um, it looks like we don't have any appearances for tonight's meeting, but do just want to uh, bring to the public's awareness that we have had um, two closed sessions since our last, um, our last monthly council work session and council meeting. The first was on April 13th, where the council closed the meeting under general provisions of Article 3-305 which allow permission to talk through the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of employees, appointees, or officials over whom this body, this public body has jurisdiction, or any other personnel matter that affects one or more specific uh, individuals. And then again, on Thursday, May 5th, the council had to call another closed session under the same provision of general provision, Article 3-305, and the uh, number reference was the same article number one. So with that, that completes the notices of the two closed sessions. Um, at this time, uh, per our rules, we do need to recess the meeting to go into the constant yield hearing. So with that, is there a motion to recess uh, the meeting at this time? I so move. Moved by Council Member Blunt. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Council Member Rao. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor, let it be known by the saying of aye. 
Aye. Aye. Aye. Any nays? Any nays? The ayes have it. Thank you so much. At this time, we'll turn it over to uh, Mr. Tonelli and Mr. Charnovich to commence with the constant yield public hearing. Can we go, Rich, or you got it? <laughs> uh, well, Mr. Tenley, there were no public comments uh, submitted, I know, at all. So I know that's on our agenda. Um, but do you, did you want me to read the constant yield doc, uh, hearing doc first, or did you want to uh, go, go, you want to kick things off? Whatever your preference. Um, I think we should go ahead and, and read this, which is what was that? Um, we've been through the constant yield process now. Um, we were required to advertise this. Um, and local paper, um, which is Prince George's County Times, I believe, and also had it posted outside. And um, this is uh, something that um, actually, Mr. Charnovich, I think you, uh, you, do ha you do have to read at least uh, this part up here through um, these six paragraphs, I believe. Sure. So we have a uh... Town of Bladensburg, uh, notice of a proposed real property increase. Uh, the mayor and council of the town of Bladensburg proposes to increase real property taxes. For the tax year beginning July 1st, 2022, the estimated real property assessable base will increase by 3.1% from $530,104,728 to $546,548,938. If the town of Bladensburg maintains the current tax rate of 74 cents per $100 of assessment, real property tax revenues will increase by 3.1%, resulting in $121,687 of new real property tax revenues. In order to fully offset the effect of increasing assessments, the real property tax rate should be reduced to 0.7177, the constant yield tax rate. The town of Bladensburg is considering not reducing its real property tax rate enough to fully offset increasing assessments. The town proposes to adopt a real property tax rate of 74 cents per $100 of assessment. This tax rate is 3.1% higher than the constant yield tax rate and will generate $121,687 in additional property tax revenues. Uh, a public hearing on this uh, proposed real estate tax rate is being held as we speak on May 9th, 2022, uh, virtually, uh, and the Zoom link was provided in our advertisement uh, per the advertisement rules. Um, I think that's it, Mr. Tonelli. I think uh, everything else is covered. And, and probably this right, and probably just this part right here, just to make sure. Sure. Uh, this hearing is open to the public. Uh, public testimony is encouraged. Participants who join the audio video conference will be enabled to speak by the meeting chair. Speakers will be allowed to address the mayor and council for three minutes. And as I, I noted at the very beginning, uh, no public comments were received via uh, email on this matter. Thank you. So, Mr. Tonelli, per the announcement, um, that does say that speakers will be allowed to address the mayor and council for three minutes um, and able to join. It said comments must... Um, be submitted by May. And again, I just want to make sure you didn't receive any in advance of this meeting. No written comments were received. I received none. Um, you can maybe call out on who's ever online, like going once, going twice, just to make sure that there's no, yeah. um, just make sure we do our, you know, our full. Exactly. Yeah. If uh, any residents would wish to speak for three minutes, um, if you could just raise your hand and we will work to enable your audio. Okay. All right, Mr. Tonelli, I'm not seeing any raised hands, but it could be because I'm not a 
what do you call it, meeting facilitator I'm on as a participant, but I don't see any raised hands. So um, I'm just to make sure Rick doesn't have anybody in the waiting room just to make sure. Mm -hmm. And then maybe okay. it, and you can, uh, yeah. Okay, so at this time, is there a motion to close the constant yield hearing? I move. Moved by Council Member Rout. Is there a second? I'll second. Seconded by Council Member Blunt. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the motion. All in favor, let it be known by the saying of aye. 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 Any nays? The ayes have it. Thank you so much. We will now reconvene our regular council meeting and continuing with the agenda, we're on uh, item number eight, which is public comments. Mr. Charnovich, we'll turn it over to you at this time. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I have received no, no general public comments uh, via email this month. So I'll be saving on water this month. <laughs> so I think I know the reason why, because yesterday was an important day. It was Mother's Day. And I think our residents, as they should, were either being celebrated because they're mothers or celebrating the mothers or women who are mother-like figures in their lives. So we'll give our residents a pass this month. <laughs> I, would, I would agree. That's far more exciting than emailing me. So okay, <laughs> I, I, I agree 100%. Got it. Thank you, All Mayor. right. Thank you, sir. Uh, so the next item, item number nine, unfinished business. So going back to follow up on the road improvement projects for FY. 2022. Uh, per the presentation from Mr. Hall in the work session, he was asking for support from the council with moving forward with the uh, bid from Pronto for the work to be done on Decatur Street, which is located in Ward 1 of the town. Is there a motion to approve the contract from Pronto? So move. Moved by Council Member Rout. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Council Member Brown. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor, let it be known by the saying of aye. 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 Any nays? The ayes have it. Thank you so much. All right. And the next item, pull this up, um, is regarding the L.A. Perez contract. And um, for this, just asking for a motion to approve the 2022 February, March, and April invoices from L.A. Perez Consulting, total totaling $3,000 per invoice for $9,000. This authorization clarifies an administrative oversight concerning the duration of the contract. The town of Bladensburg has contracted Mr. Perez's L.A. Perez Consulting to perform lobbying services in connection with the annual legislative session by the state of Maryland government. Is there a motion to approve? A move. Moved by Council Member Brown. Is there a second? Second. <clears throat> Seconded by Council Member Rao. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor, let it be known by the saying of aye. 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 Any nays? The ayes have it. Thank you all so much. Uh, next, we will turn it back over to our administrative team for the financial business, the first being Ordinance 02-2022. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, and I will, this evening, I will read our um, proposed FY23 budget ordinance, our first reading uh, into the record. So we have an ordinance to levy the real property and personal property tax rates and appropriate and adopt the operating budget of the mayor and town council of Bladensburg, Maryland for the fiscal year of July 1st, 2022 through June 30th, 2023. Be it ordained by the mayor and town council of Bladensburg that pursuant to the authority contained in Article 501 of the Charter of the Town of Bladensburg, the town budget for the fiscal year uh, 2023 is attached here too, and be it further ordained that the real property tax levy for the fiscal year commencing July 1, 2022 is 74 cents 
per $100 assessed value and $2.09 per $100 of assessed business personal property value located within the corporate limits of the town of Bladensburg and now therefore be enacted and ordained by the mayor and council of the town of Bladensburg to approve the general operating budget for fiscal year 2023 and be it further enacted and ordained that upon passage of this ordinance, the same shall be authenticated by the mayor of the mayor and town clerk to be recorded among the town books kept for that purpose and that a certified copy of the ordinance shall be posted in the town hall in public view for a period of not less than 10 days after its passage and be it further ordained that this ordinance shall be effective on the first day of July, 2022. The requirement for reading this ordinance on two separate days was fulfilled on May 9th, 2022, and a second reading will be held on June 6th, 2022. Introduced by the mayor and town council of the town of Bladensburg at uh, this regular meeting on May 9th, 2022, and after this meeting, this uh, particular ordinance will be uh, prominently posted at the town hall and uh, outside on the board and will be available for uh, public inspection up until uh, the next reading on June 6th, 2022. Thank you, Mayor. Great, thank you. <clears throat> thank you for that, Mr. Charnovich. <clears throat> and then I do apologize, but one thing I didn't catch was because we had the amendment to add two additional items to the agenda, um, we have unfinished business. So um, the mental health awareness update that council member Route had suggested, and then uh, the unfinished carryover item from the work session was um, with regard to the proclamation for National Police Week. Council member Route, would you like to go first with the mental health awareness update? Thank you, Mayor James. Um, so we um, have been planning expeditiously for the event, but unfortunately, the same thing that happened last year is going to happen this year, where both the rain and our rain date um, will affect um, this event. And so I wanted to bring it to the body um, just to get your sentiments as of what we should do um, and your recommendations. Now, as a mental health and mental wellness advocate, um, I would like to see us possibly locate an alternate location um, if we can. Um, and I will begin doing my due diligence if that is possible. So looking at either the community center or any of the high schools or any of the schools to see if they can open up their spaces that we can use um, and then bring it inside because we also were doing a diaper giveaway, um, giving a partnering with the Now Foundation. Um, they were, they secured um, diaper sizes one to four. And I know, you know, because we're coming out of COVID, but there are still families living under the poverty line and need support. Um, and diapers are one of them. So they could get diapers, they could hear about services, and that would just be a, a happy, you know, a great opportunity. Um, so I didn't want, you know, just to make the executive decision myself. I wanted this to be a collaborative approach. So, um, so council, what do you think? Can you try the fire department? Is that big enough, that space? The training center or? Is that, the, that place we had that meeting at? Yeah, the you know, upstairs. They have, don't they have bingo? They do, oh. but I wonder if you could time it. Um, like you said, it, it probably would conflict with your original time, but... Um, the other option, um, speaking of Seton, is maybe Seton's gym would be an option. Um, I can try to reach out to Coach Cage over there and see. And um, the community center, do you think that would be large enough or would you need more space than that? 
No, so we would just need a large space. We can okay. make the tables be pushed, you know, to like the wall, but there is a, a yoga session that's taking place. So that was the most space that we would need. Um, we're really not doing food this year. So we're doing snacks, healthy snacks. So we wouldn't be like eating. Um, so any larger space we could accommodate. Um, so if we could, I could, if you, Mayor James, could look into CN and I could ask the fire department, um, the chief to see if we could, you know, play with the time or something. Um, yep, will do. And um, even with the community center, I know they normally have classes, but they don't end until like 1.30. So even if, um, and I think you just have to be out by six. So it, even if that could be an option, I can just check with Mr. Bynum over there too as a backup. Okay. Um, so yeah, thank you, Mr. Sharnovich, Mr. Jeffries and Chief Collinson. We were all kind of huddling at least and was like, oh, this happened last year. That's why we had to move it three times and it was in June, so. The third time's the charm yeah. <laughs> and it came together. <laughs> yeah, last year, yep. Yep. Okay, and then um, just briefly wanted to ask for um, the council support on the National Police Week uh, proclamation on behalf of the town council. And so, um, Mr. Charnovich, did you circulate that already? Yes, okay, perfect. Yes. So um, would you like to just read it so the public can be aware of um, the contents of the proclamation? Sure. So this is a uh, proclamation uh, of the town of Bladensburg related to uh, National Police Week. Whereas National Police Week offers honor, remembrance, and peer support while allowing law enforcement, survivors, and citizens to gather and pay homage to those who gave their lives in the line of duty. And whereas in 1962, mm -hmm. President John F. Kennedy signed a proclamation which designated May 15th as Peace Officers Memorial Day and the week in which that date falls as Police Week. Currently, tens of thousands of law enforcement officers from around the world converge on Washington, D.C. to participate in a number of planned events which honor those who pay the ultimate sacrifice. And whereas the memorial service began in 1982, as a gathering in Senate Park of approximately 120 survivors and supporters of law enforcement. Decades later, the event, more commonly known as National Police Week, has grown to a series of events which attracts thousands of survivors and law enforcement officers to the nation's capital each year. Whereas the 24 officers of the Bladensburg Police Department play an important role in safeguarding the constitutional rights and freedoms of the residents of the town of Bladensburg, Maryland. And in the fiscal year of 2021, the officers responded to 10,648 calls for service without the loss of life. And whereas the men and women of the Bladensburg Police Department are committed to keeping the safety of the community a high priority. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and town council do hereby recognize May 11th, 2022 through May 17th, 2022 as National Police Week to honor those who gave their lives in the line of duty. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Charnovich, for reading that proclamation. Is there a motion by the council to approve? I so move. Moved by Council Member Blunt. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Council Member Brown. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor, let it be known by the saying of aye. 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 Any nays? The ayes have it. Thank you so much. And again, thank you all for your support in recognizing uh, National Police Week. As Mr. Charnovich said, it's a decades-long tradition of honoring those fallen uh, in the line of duty, but also it gives us an opportunity to express gratitude to those who are still serving. 
The next item under new business is the fireworks proposal for the July 4th event. Um, we discussed it in the prior meeting, the information that was provided by Mr. Jeffries and his recommendation was to move forward with securing fantastic fireworks. So I wanna call for a motion to proceed with that agreement. That's a move. Moved by council member Blunt. Is there a second? Mm -hmm. Second. 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 Ms. Oh, uh, council McBride can handle it. Okay, got it. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll call for the vote. All in favor, let it be known by the saying of aye. 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 Any nays? The ayes have it. Thank you so much. And at this time, uh, we'll move on with the C10 Summerfest sponsorship that was discussed in the work session to support their upcoming community event on June 11th from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. And would ask for a motion for the town to support the Scarlet sponsorship at $1,500. As we talked about before, this event will include music, food, trucks, a beverage garden, activities for young children, Seton will be selling their gear, not giving it away, and there will be a basket raffle. Uh, the sponsorship comes with prominent signage at the event, recognition from the stage throughout the event, our name and logo on the Seton Family Day event map, and uh, promotional materials. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Moved by <laughs> Councilmember Brown. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Councilmember Rout. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor, let it be known by the saying of aye. 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 Any nays? The ayes have it. Thank you so much. Uh, next is the End Time Ministry Scholarship. I uh, want to turn it over to which council member is going to take this one? Council member Brown, you want to take it or council sure. member Route? Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Mayor. Yes. So um, we are proposing that we provide scholarships to the seven Bladensburg High School students who are part of the End Time Har Harvest Ministry Program in the amount of $750. Thank you, Council Member Brown. Is there a motion uh, um, on the floor to approve the $750 scholarship? Or I'm sorry, you made the motion. Is there a second? Sorry. <laughs> That's what happens when you're trying to write and talk at the same time. Sorry, is there a second? I think I Council, Council Member Rout, any further discussion? Yes, I have some discussion. Sure, mm -hmm. Council Member Rout. Um, so I'm, I just wanted to ask, um, because there's seven of them and this is our first endeavor, um, with these scholarships, if we could start with $500 a young person, um, just for the purposes of supporting them. And then next year, as we spoke about in our budget session um, previously, the council will then be able to have our own scholarship. Um, so I'm in favor of a $500 denomination and um, that denomination being um, given to the student directly. Uh, thank you for that council member round, but I think that we, we haven't, um, I, I don't know, have we done anything over the past few years as we are gearing up for our own scholarship? I don't think that, um, and it's only seven students at this point, I mean, I, I, and um, from the budget perspective, I didn't see where $750, another $250 would be burdensome on the on, on the town, and we, we could not um, not be able to support these students with a $750 scholarship. Yeah, thank you for that, Council Member Brown. So the motion is open and on the floor. So um, I'll call it to vote. If it doesn't, then we yeah. can um, have another motion as Council Member Rout proposed. Uh, so with the current motion on the floor, it is for $750 per student um, and for the amount to be payable to the institution. And I'll now call for the vote. All in favor, let it be known by the saying of aye. 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 Any nays? The ayes have it. Thank you so much. 
So, um, Council Member Brown, as we said in the work session, Mr. Tonelli or one of the staff members can get a form together so we can uh, grab the information needed um, and also have it for uh, auditing purposes in addition to being able to just capture the information for each of the students and have it ready in advance of the banquet. Uh, let's see. So the next item that is up uh, on the agenda are the staff reports. So I will turn it over to our acting uh, or interim town administrator, Mr. Charnovich. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'm going to use my, if you don't, if you don't mind, these my three minutes. Uh, I'm going to take just one minute, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to use my two minutes. I'd like to give to Mr. Jeffries, who has joined us this evening, to just give a quick overview of all the hard work and amazing effort he's done on the July 4th project. I just want him to give an overview of of what he's, uh, what's been happening. Um, so I'd like to do that. So uh, for for my one minute, uh, all I all I would I guess like to report is, uh, you know, I, I have been serving as your as, as your town clerk. Uh, since uh, last October, and on May 5th of, um, uh, of last week, I was just named uh, the interim uh, town, administra town administrator. For those who are on, possibly uh, of the community who are on this call who were, were not, uh, not, were not aware of that, I just wanted to kind of announce that and say that I look forward to um, uh, serving in this role to help the, help the town uh, uh, continue to move forward and working with uh, all of our directors, our, all of our staff, uh, all of the community. Uh, I'm uh, always here to, to answer and help any questions anyone may have. Uh, and I, I look forward to, forward to uh, uh, serving in this, in this role. And thank you for all the, the confidence you've, you've put in me to, uh, to take it on during this, this transition. So hopefully that, that, only, that was only one minute, but uh, I'll now turn it over to Mr. Jeffries who can, uh, I wanted to touch on the July 4th event, please. Thank you, Mr. Charnovich. Um, I'll, just, I'll just give a brief overview of the Plainsburg Fireworks event for this year. Um, so far, we have um, I've solidified seven food trucks for the event. I've also created a draft map of the event. It's going to be three different theme sections. Uh, one section will have all the food trucks. Another section will be for this event stage and people to gather around and sit and watch the entertainment that's going on. Also, uh, the next section will be for the amusement rides. Um, I've also talked with Ultimate Amusements about the amusement rides. Uh, no contracts have been solidified yet because we wanted to wait until the fireworks were approved. So now that the fireworks are approved, now we can start uh, deep diving into different contracts and solidifying different entertainment. Um, Event features, it'll be live performances, um, food trucks, amusements, uh, balloon decor. I've also, um, DJ Flava, who's been a part of our past events, he's also available to do this event. So he'll be a part of the event as well. We've had several fireworks meetings so far in collaboration with uh, code enforcement, public works, police, and fire department, as well as the Blainsburg Waterfront Park. Uh, marketing, since the fireworks are now approved, I'll begin marketing the event next week, starting with a teaser post, along follow, following up with a flyer and trailer. Um, as the weeks go along, we'll start putting out banners and uh, flyers around the community. We'll ship out flyers uh, to residents' homes. Uh, I'll do social media giveaways, also contact different media uh, companies in the area, such as NBC Sports or Fox 5 DC or anything like that. There'll also be giveaways such as possibly Six Flags tickets or Rita's Italian Ice during the event. Um, that was just my brief summary so far, but if you guys have any questions, feel free to call me, email me, or anything. Uh, that's all I have for it tonight. Great. Thank you, Mr. Jeffries. We're definitely looking forward to it. And um, just for reference, so we do have a Port Towns quarterly meeting coming up. 
So it would be great if we could share the flyer with them in advance and then just remind them when we have the meeting at the end of this month, I think it's two weeks from this week mm -hmm. uh, about the event and encourage them to host watch parties for their own residents. I know Ed Edmonston, for example, blocked off Decatur Street Bridge and had that as like a watch area so no traffic could come through and residents could gather. Um, but then it rained us out the last time that that rain. Um, so that's you know, global maybe, warming. It is. It truly yeah. is. So um, maybe just want to put that out on the table to see if you could um, just help us communicate with them and uh, work with their teams as well to come up with some ideas so that it stretches beyond Bladensburg and benefits the whole community. Um, but any other comments or questions from the council about the fireworks? All right, thank you so much for that update. I know I'm excited about it and can't wait to see all the creative marketing that you do to bring the residents out and bring us together safely. So thank you. Um, Mr. Tarnovich, anything else before we move on to the next staff report? Uh, no, that is all this evening, uh, Mayor, okay. thank you. All right, uh, next we'll turn it over to public safety. Oh, Chief, you're muted. I think you're on mute. Thank you. There you go. I thought you were just tired of talking to us because of the banquet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, not at all. Not at all. I'll be real brief. Um, since this is uh, right on the heels of uh, um, Public Safety Week, um, I just want to focus on and just highlight a few things. I want to first thank the council for the uh, wonderful proclamation. And as the community heard, our officers uh, work very hard and diligently, even through the, the pandemic. Uh, but as you heard, we responded to uh, 10,648 calls for service last year. And that's 10,648 contacts that we've had with the, with the community. And I just want to commend our men and women, those uh, on the front line and those uh, behind the scenes for the good job that they do. Uh, as the mayor alluded to that this weekend, we, we honored uh, all town residents, uh, I'm sorry, employees oh at our first <laughs> annual um, awards banquet, which was very well attended. And we gave out a number of awards to, to uh, include uh, the first ever firearms award, education award, uh, command recognitions, special recognitions. Um, we ha we recognize former council member Ward One, uh, Chris Mendoza, uh, Chief Sumner from the Volunteer Fire Department, who's been a tremendous partner uh, and friend to the police department. Uh, Miss Diane Griffith, uh, Mr. Charlie Wiltshire from uh, Walmart, the general manager. Uh, he's been exceptionally uh, gra gracious to the police department, special community outreach team. Uh, we did the Chief Special Recognition Awards. Uh, we did the Unit Citation. Uh, we did the Meritorious Service Award. This is a award where officers put their, their lives on the line to save, uh, you know, our residents during a uh, crisis. Uh, we did the Life Saving Medal. Um, we did the Administrator of the Year, Employee of the Year, Civilian of the Year. Um, we want to recognize uh, Ms. Natasha Adams as the Administrator of the Year. We want to recognize Pernell Hall, the foreman of our Public Works. Uh, our Civilian of the Year was Ms. Kimberly Green. Instructor of the Year was Sergeant Patrick Thompson. Investigator of the Year was Sergeant uh, Detective Sergeant Maria Ramirez. Supervisor of the Year was uh, Corporal Daryl Tompkins. And our Officer of the Year for 2021 was Officer Gerald Pickering. And I want to commend and congratulate all of these officers and, and staff members for the great job that they do for the residents each and every day. They, all of our officers do a great job. But this year, we highlighted these this group that I just announced. And I want to encourage our other officers. The next year, I want to read their names um, as something of the year. Uh, lastly, I just want to highlight code enforcement. Um, there were 10 bulk trash reminder notices issued. 
code enforcement removed 15 signs, 10 from right of ways. Total sign, total amount of, of signs removed year to date is 119. There were 10 abandoned vehicles in residential areas, three in the business area, four in apartment areas, and six were impounded. Year to date, 93 abandoned vehicles uh, have been uh, impounded. I'm sorry, 93 abandoned vehicles were dealt with. 31 of the vehicles had to be impounded. Uh, there were 12 grass violation notices issued. Code enforcement received four graffiti complaints that they mitigated. Um, and that concludes the uh, public safety report for this uh, month. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer. Thank you, Chief. And Daphne, we want to thank you and the team for the event that you had up at the schools, the Bike Olympics for the first time this year. That was well attended. And the, again, the young ladies from Elizabeth Seaton volunteered along with our police explorers who are always there. But I want to appreciate the team for creating a good family-friendly event. And I understand there's another program coming up June 4th, I think it is. Um, yes, ma'am. That's the community yard sale. Yes, yes. So definitely want to make sure the community is aware of that. But thank you all again for everything that you do to protect and serve this community. Uh, next, we want to turn it over to our interim town clerk. Oh, and actually, I just realized I misread the agenda. Treasurer was first this time. I'm used to seeing the, it the other way around. So Mr. Tonelli, please forgive me. Um, I will all good. give it to all you. Good. <laughs> I talk enough, so um, I'll, I'll keep mine short. I, uh, on the council packet, on the mayor and council packet is our financials through the month of April. We're 83% through the year. I'm gonna share my screen really quick since I have control, I'll go ahead and take advantage of it. Um, everybody see it okay? Thumbs up? Okay, good. Yes. I, I can't tell if I shared or not. Um, so 83% of the way through the year, total revenues are just ahead of that at 84%. Um, so we're doing great with that. And we're 4% ahead of this time last year. Expenses are at 75% through this fiscal year. And um, so expenses are under, revenues are a little bit over. Um, our, we have $660,000 of work with between now and the end of the fiscal year. Now, we do have this transfer from fund balance up here, but this will definitely get us through all of May and part of June, and we're hoping for the um, increase in the income tax revenues that everybody's expecting to receive because of the better job markets, um, So, and also the personal property tax funds as well. So we will not have to dip into the fund balance transfer. So that's what we're keeping our eyes on and everybody's keeping their eyes on right now. Um, and you can see the individual departments here. Um, again, 83% is your benchmark, we're 83% of the way through the fiscal year. Just about every department is under budget. So that, that's a good sign. Um, a great sign. Yep, so it's uh, we're very fortunate. Um, so, um, and just in case we do have reserves, but uh, again, we're, we're showing very strong financials through April. That's all I have. Great. I think wow. I got done in 90 seconds. I can't believe it. I know. <laughs> I'm trying to get better. I've been working on this trying to get better. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. I mean, it's budget <laughs> season. So, uh, yeah, that's great. Um, and I do want to just call out, I appreciate all the time you've been putting into the spreadsheets, the edits, just trying to make sure you keep us on track. Uh, also, in terms of the quantity of min meetings, giving ample opportunities for the community to listen and um, get an understanding of the budget for every single line item, for every single budget that we have so that they can ask questions. And um, I thank you for making the process easy. Thank you. I, th I think Mr. Tarnovich has a question. Yes. Over to Sorry. you, Mr. Tarnovich. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw your screen or not because I shared. And oh, yeah. Off. That's the thing. When you do the share screen, my view flip that, off. Yeah, that's why know. I try to make sure you see. Yeah, you know, thank you. Because I, 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 I know I, I throw people off with that sometimes. So it's... Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Mr. Tonelli. Uh, just a quick question, a process, because um, I know we're in crunch time about the budget. So um, is the pleasure of the council for me to send circulate an email to schedule our next session? I'm not asking to set it tonight necessarily. I'm just 
for next week or what is that the pleasure of the council to get our next meeting on the uh, on the calendar so i have trying to find the um the actual schedule of meetings i had it because I, I was just looking at this on friday i thought our next one was the june 6th meeting where it's the final opportunity to um take a look at any any final changes um and and provide that input before we adopt it in the seven o'clock meeting so yes so the i guess my question is i guess it's a matter of uh of of, of uh comfortability comfortable level in that um that'll be the night of adoption so i guess the question is do we need to have another session between now and then I don't know if Mr. Tonelli would like that or everybody would like that and everybody doesn't want that. I'm just kind of wanted to throw it out there if, if we wanted to have another session um, between now and the adoption night. Uh, I, I'm not really familiar with what the custom has been here. I'm willing to certainly willing to provide a recommendation if needed or if Mr. Mr. Tonelli wants to uh, uh, advise what he thinks he's he's comfortable with whether whether it is having another session or two or none or um just want to throw that out there so mr tonelli your recommendation i feel like we've already set the schedule to make sure that we met at least four to five times and there's always every year still refinements being made up until that final night but um what is your recommendation um, well, I guess um, I guess as mayor and council's comfort level. I mean, I could talk about it. I, you know, I, if it was me, I'd say let's have a meeting every week, but I'll go over like you know, uh, if that's not going to happen. <laughs> so I'm not going to do that to you all. It's all the faces. I, I, I'm just kidding. But um, I would maybe have some time to think about this, let it sink in a little bit. I wouldn't mind having another one in a week or two. Um, you know, if I, as we get some better, some more information, as we get closer to adopting the budget, as I, I think you, uh, you asked the chief to come back with like a salary grid of, uh, of the competitive jurisdictions. And just so we know, you know, just some final things, final thoughts, maybe. Um, so when we get to June meeting, because, you know, by the time we hit June, we already feel like we're at the finish line and then, you know, got to like pretty much stop and go to MML and everything. So it's, um, um, my recommendation would, would be at least one more 60 minute meeting, just have that blocked out. I mean, we don't have to go through like by line item anymore. So this is really just, you know, Hey, you know, anything else has anything come up? Should we shift funds over here? Should we not do this? You know, um, just more of a real, you know, like five line, like, you know, just five, like five or six things just to, you know, to talk about and everything. So I have to go through the whole process again, because I, I think we know what we're talking about and what we need to get to, what, what we want to do and where we want to go. So hoping just, you know, maybe one more, just block out 60 minutes in a couple of weeks. Sounds good. So, and I saw some heads nodding as well. So Mr. Charnovich, can we agree to um, send you our availability over the next few weeks so we can get coordinated, but also get a notice out to the community so that we can hopefully encourage more residents to tune in and be a part of the conversation as well. Um, okay. Yes, certainly. Okay. Mayor James? Uh, yes, council member. Yes, is there, um, is there a possibility that we could just see some of the changes a little bit before so that we could like react to them and like caucus with each other if possible. I know Mr. Tilling, you have that ru that running Excel sheet um, that you've been, that's your like your cheat sheet for us. Like just so that we can see, cause I know we added a lot of things, but I don't know if we. Yeah, and if you have ideas, please run it by me and Mr. Tarnovich can get it out to maybe the other members as well, just so we can, you know, bounce it around in a, you know, um, you know, as you said, caucus, so we don't have to, you know, uh, uh, to talk yeah. about it before, you know. So. Yeah, yeah, a meeting before the meeting. <laughs> Sounds good. So, okay, we'll work on that and then you will provide us with some of the 
the cheat sheet sort of items. And that way it'll help us too, because a lot of things were thrown out, like the consultant to help us mm -hmm. start lining up the funding for LEOPS, the, um, the pay that we talked about for the PD. Um, I think there may have even been a, well, we talked about the HR consultant before, but there may be some other things. So it gives us a chance to just cross check and ensure we have everything on there. So thank you. Um, Good for, point. Yeah, thank you for that. Okay, so Mr. Tonelli, sorry we hit you with a bunch of questions and took up more of your time. <laughs> oh, I was after done. <laughs> you were so brief, after you were so brief. Um, so that completes the staff reports, or actually, um, let me take a step back. So I don't see Mr. Hall's number. Is there anything anyone would like to share from a public work standpoint? Okay. Okay. I would I would like to thank him for knocking down the beehive. Yeah. And I want I wish he was here to tell us about it because Mayor James, you and I spoke about getting an expert to come and talk to us about bees and why we have so many wasp and bees nest. Um I don't know if you want to summarize, but that was pretty important to me. It was that was Huge to talk about public safety. So there, um, it seems like this time of year, just in random places in town, we see these masses that form in literally a couple of days. They're small, like the size of a baseball, and three or four days later, there are these masses um, of a hive. And I've seen them in the community. Most recently, Councilmember Route saw them, and there were children playing near them. So Mr. Charnovich wanted to just raise. Um, to Councilmember Rout's point, raised to the staff attention that I think we'd be interested in having some sort of expert uh, come and speak with us about that because we don't, they serve a purpose, they're pollinators and we need pollinators in our community. We have an urban farm right around the corner in Bladensburg, one over in Edmonston. So we're not trying to damage the ecosystem, but are there things that we should be doing from a public works perspective so that at certain times of year, we're doing certain treatments so that public works even knows what to look out for. So they're not just randomly mowing and hit one of these hives, like the one most recently, which Mr. Hall said probably have four or 500 bees in there. So if there's a way to reach out and do that, I think it would be really helpful for us, but also for the community. So they also are equipped and armed to know what to look out for, especially as their children are playing or as maybe elderly parents are walking through the community. We just want to do our part to make sure everyone's safe, including the bees. We just don't want to interact with them and upset them. So <laughs> uh, thank you. Yeah. And I see the note in the chat. So if you can um, follow up also with Ms. McCutcheon, she may have an option for you as well. Yes, I can do week. that. Okay, great. Thank you, Mayor. Absolutely. So that completes the staff reports. We'll now move into the mayor and council reports, beginning with council member McBride. You're muted, council member. Okay. Um, I'll be very brief. Um, I attended a COG Farm Committee meeting um, April 8th and we discussed it. And we discussed um, the food program again regarding the food access for children and young adults, um, as I've mentioned to the committee before. Um, I, do, I do have one idea that I want to introduce to the committee at a later, at a later time. Um, and I attended the Eccentra Easter event. Uh, I truly enjoy watching the children interact um, and the bunny rabbit. <laughs> um, and I did attend uh, briefly the bicycle event from the Bladensburg Police Department. That's it. And a host of budget meetings, but who's counting? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that report. We'll now turn it over to Council Member Blunt. No, I'm okay. All right. Uh, Council Member Route. Thank you, Mayor James. Um, I 
have um, been planning for the mental health awareness event. I was able to attend uh, most recently um, our PGCMA meetings where there's um, the legislative priority of Juneteenth becoming um, a holiday in the state of Maryland um, was passed. And so that was something that PGCMA has worked on collectively. There was also a presenter on um, mental health in the community as it relates to the underpaid uh, nonprofit organizations within Prince George's County. And so it was um, really a call to action to not only support the nonprofit organizations, but to also recognize the importance of mental health and mental wellness as we enter into Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, I've attended all of our budget meetings. Um, I also attended our story time in the park um, this past week at the at our David C. Harrington Park, um, which is um, the first time in a long time where we had this. The uh, Bladensburg Library comes out and reads, and um, it's you know, it's kind of important uh, for children's, uh, children's literacy to be able, for children to be able to understand and hear literacy. And so I was, um, I, I want to encourage more um, young parents in our community, uh, five and younger, if you are available um, to come out to the town park. Uh, our librarian, she sings and signs and it was, it was nice and interesting. Um, additionally, um, I have been uh, trying to get my way around um, Ward 1 to really talk about some of the parking issues. I was able to speak with seven more homes. Um, the weather has not been very friendly. I'm not going to be going out in the rain, um, but um, talking to seven more homes. And of the seven, only five homes thought um, that we had a parking issue. Uh, two of the homes um, on um, Volta did not feel like we had a parking issue and that parking was fine. Um, so I just wanted to report out on that. Um, and then lastly, uh, COVID-19 is still here. Um, the town um, the town of Bladensburg, we do have masks and COVID tests. So if you would like to receive those items, um, you can contact Miss Diane and she can make arrangements uh, for your pickup of that because there's another variant coming. Um, so that's all I have. Great, thank you for that update um, and your report, Council Member Rout. Uh, next, we'll turn it over to Council Member Brown, also from Ward 1. <laughs> thank you, Mayor James. And happy belated Mother's Day to everyone as well. Well, of course, I attended um, several of our uh, budget sessions, but I'd like to bring to attention that the 2022 General Assembly came to a close on Monday, April the 11th. So a number of, of bills were vetoed by the, by the governor, but those bills were also overridden by the General Assembly in a noun law. So there's 79. Are you all hearing the ice cream truck in the background? I'm sorry. Can I... So I that, mean, are you handing out ice cream <laughs> because <laughs> you're making me kind of hungry over here? <laughs> Man, I, I, will, I want to finish this. I, yeah, I'm go for it. Because I'm in competition. Okay. Oh, they stopped right in front of her. <laughs> they just stopped right in front of her. I'm just going to... It's think. always when it's the worst time, too. When you need it, happens. it right? Yep. <laughs> okay, and he's like, right on the parking lot. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so 79 of those uh, of those bills are now um, long, and I'm going to share some of them that affect us. But then there, 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 there are a lot of bills um, on, still on his desk, and if he, if he signs them within a certain time frame, they will become law. But if he uh, vetoes them, well, he doesn't sign them. They're dead until the next year, until, until the next year. So just want to let you all know that the uh, climate change bill passed. These are bills that are now law. The climate change bill, and I'm not going to go into detail. I'll tell you where to go so that you can read, have more details about them. Also, the abortion um, care 
access bill, the paid family medical leave bill, that is, that is now law. Banning ghost guns is law. Healthy Babies Equity Act is law. A referendum to legalize mar mar um, marijuana will be on the ballot this November. So because it is a, refer a referendum, this bill is not subject to a, to a veto. Hmm. Uh, yeah, recurring contributions, equity uh, in transportation sector, um, criminal uh, justice reform, insulin cost reduction act. So there are a lot of the tax relief measures have been signed into law. So, uh, so I, and, and but what I can do additionally is to provide some information that, that gives a little a little bit more substance, and it talks about each one of these bills um, that uh, that that I can provide as well. Um, so let me see. Oh, and and this one right here. <clears throat> also, the one second. Um, the bill for, so we got, they also passed Juneteenth. Uh, Juneteenth, Council yeah, member, House Bill That's three minutes. Just wanted to give you the <laughs> warning. <laughs> <laughs> Madam oh, Sergeant, that arm. I know you didn't go. <laughs> hey, Chief, you going to let them do that to me. Mm -mm. <laughs> you get 30 more seconds because of the ice cream truck. <laughs> All right, I'm not ready. So, um, so, so, but Juneteenth. As much as Juneteenth um, um, becomes a state a, a legal and state employee employee holiday, so that's a good one right there too. And so, if you want to know a little bit more, go to mdlegislative.com. That's mdlegislative.com. And if you don't know who your district representatives are, go to mdelect.net. That's mdelect.net. Thank you so very much, Mayor. <laughs> Thank you. That concludes my report. <laughs> Thank you, council member. So I started the clock on myself. So just piggybacking off of that, one of the things over the past month that I've been watching is uh, when the governor is going to sign the bill on HURs. There was a tentative date um, back in early April. We were hoping for that. It didn't happen. So it's just been a little bit of back and forth with that. The reason it's so important is unlike the current uh, law on HURs where they're set to sunset, the uh, new bill takes away that sunset removal clause. And so for <laughs> residents to understand that's money from the gas tax that goes to road improvements in the Bl Bladensburg town, such mm -hmm. as what we talked about for Decatur Street and what we talked about for 57th Avenue. Mm -hmm. As Mr. Hall said earlier, the 57th Avenue construction project is easily $300,000. Well, Bladensburg's FY23 anticipated HUR contribution from the state is $226,700, $96.95 for road improvement. So still watching it because we want to make sure that come July 1, that amount is there and that it does not change. So I hope to have an update by the end of this month that the legislation has changed. Um, similar to my colleagues on the call, we did have a meeting at the top of the month with State Highway Administration to talk about the um, possibility of doing sidewalk, um, a temporary one on Quincy Street. It was great to get feedback from the community there. And then I know Council Member Brown and myself went back out after that meeting to talk um, with a couple of residents and just further get more information from folks who are in that area and impacted. Attended a couple of the membership meetings for the Maryland Mayor's Association and PGCMA's board, um, but also wanted to just note, like everyone said, we've really been focused on this budget and having separate conversations about how we can make the, the right allocations and make sure that we have a sound budget that we can stick to for the coming year. Um, also attended the Rogers Heights uh, Steering Committee monthly meeting and just wanted to share, this could be an opportunity for us to partner with the school they really have, in our last meeting, we're talking about the impact of the pandemic on our students mentally and by them 
um, one of the things I raised is by them not being able to physically be out and move and just have simple things like recess or how we used to have gym on a regular basis and have the ability to run around, be free, not following, you know, strict rules, sitting at a desk, but just to express creativity, um, to have endorphins released. It's just lacking and it's not there and it's taking its toll on the students. So we talked about partnering, not just with Bladensburg, but talking with the port towns about trying to sponsor some events over the summer where it's just simple, it's not a heavy lift, but just let's go ahead and get kids out for a community kickball game. Let's get the kids out for some soccer, just doing things that don't really cost a lot of money, but emotionally will take a large toll. So I'll um, share more in the written report, but just wanted to give a quick synopsis and plan to see, because I do want to talk more about that with our Port Towns quarterly meeting coming up to see how the Port Towns can really support that. Um, and so that is the quick summary of my report um, for the last month. And with that, it looks like we've come to the end of the agenda. So I'll call for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved by Council Member Rout. Is there a second? A second. Seconded right. by Council Member Blunt. Any discussion? I'll just say again, happy belated Mother's Day to everyone. Thank you all um, also who went above and beyond for the staff awards banquet, which was Chief's vision. Tasha, Kim, they really were the angels behind the scene making it happen along with Chief. So really appreciate you all taking the time and making the sacrifice to help us honor our staff. And so with that, I will call for the vote. All in favor, let it be known by the saying of aye. 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 Any nays? Good night, everybody. Thank Good you night. so much. We're adjourned. Yay.